Disclaimer. Although the test results presented here have been determined to the best of our knowledge and belief, the methodology used does not meet scientific standards. Statements or evaluations of, made by the author, are therefore exclusively personal opinions. Results presented here may also be unintentionally falsified or fundamentally incorrect. For example, talking to the camera while dealing with open containers of cleaned water might have contaminated the samples. Test stripes used may indicate if bacteria are present but not how many. Above certain CFU, the whole stripe will form red. In real lab results, this would be dismissed as TNDC, too numerous to count, and the next lower concentrated dilution would be analyzed. Test stripes in this video may show even very low amounts of bacteria appearing as highly contaminated. Hi, this is Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. For all the subscribers, welcome back to my channel. For all the new viewers, welcome to my channel. After this disclaimer, I need to clarify once more. I'm a radio amateur, not a microbiologist. As radio amateurs, we do experiments based on the tools we can afford and on common sense. Your mileage may vary. When I designed this test series, I was afraid that the test stripes were not sensitive enough. As you might have guessed from the disclaimer, quite the opposite was the case. Now I need to address something unexpected. All my plans from video number two were thrown overboard. I did not do a 7-day torture test. Why? Because all filters failed after two days of testing. Yes, you've heard it right. All filters failed after day number two in my tests. For different reasons, but they all failed. If you want all the dirty details, watch the complete video until the end. And by the way, I highly recommend to watch the first two videos about this topic, uh, because they build up on each other. And just to mention that, if you like this kind of content, share it with your friends, please leave a like. And if you want to watch more of that, even consider subscribing to my channel. So before we get into the filter testing results, we need to know whether the raw water was contaminated. You saw me in video number two where and how I captured this dirty water. There was visible turbidity, signs of wild boar, deer tracks were all around the puddle, and deer fecals were even right next to the puddle. So chances were high that I could confirm bacteria contamination in that water source. And no surprise, this is what happened. The test stripes showed maximum possible bacteria contamination. This started very early in the breeding process. I would say it started to show after 24 hours when all the other test stripes were completely white. As mentioned in the disclaimer, we do not have enough information to quantify the level of contamination. We only know it was infected with bacteria, so it's appropriate to assume that the water is not safe to drink. This makes it the perfect candidate for an outdoor water filter test. So let's jump right into the results, starting with the MSR Mini Works X. This, by the way, is my old one. More later. If you have watched my first two videos, MSR made the biggest claims. Having their own class 2 laboratory, tested according NSFP 231 protocol, over 10 days under worst conditions, so one might expect this filter would pass my amateur test with ease. So I was super excited to test a brand new sample of this oldest water filter in my possession. The problem with too high expectation is always you might get disappointed. I would describe what happened with the MSR Mini Works Access premature ejaculation, literally. As you saw in the second video, it squirted dirt water out of the piston. After analyzing my footage for this video, I could see that it most likely contaminated the clean water with a drop of dirt water. So the result was not surprising. There was bacteria contamination detectable. As you can see by the pattern, it might have been probably just one CFU, colony forming unit, that caused this pattern. But if the failure mode of the water filter is blowing dirt water all over the place, what is it worth then? So I reached out to MSR service and after expressing my frustration that the most expensive filter in my test setup failed at day one, uh, I asked them what I can do. The reply was not very helpful. They would not comment on the leak as they would not see it on the footage that I provided to them. Then they started repeating that they do intensive testings, that they work with the military, yada yada yada. And finally they suggested that I return to the cellar. Okay. So I produced better footage of the leaking uh, and send it to them, which is by the way also included in video number two. 
When I did not hear back from them for 24 hours, I reached out again to them, asking if they could comment now with the better footage. They replied and, well, this time it's better I show you the whole reply. So I will put it in the bottom of the screen and you can stop and read it in full length if you like to. I will only address a few points of their reply as I feel that this custom unfriendly behavior does not deserve any of my attention. In their mail they suggested to read the manual and be prepared to troubleshoot it, which would indicate I did something wrong. Well, if I buy new equipment, I expect it to work out of the box without the need for troubleshooting it. Then they started suggesting I would not have a brand new unit. Well, I told them I had a brand new unit and in video number one, I showed it even in the camera next to my 15 year old unit. It even made it on the thumbnail. And then they go crazy by suggesting that the ceramic should have been scrubbed before very first use. But let's have a look at their manual. Before first use, pump 1 to 2 liters of water through filter 1 to 2 minutes to purge residual carbon dust before attaching to a clean water container. I didn't do that as I do not care about carbon remains in my test sample. I didn't want to drink it anyway. If it was necessary to grind down a brand new ceramic element, uh, I would suggest to put a big fat red label on there requesting exactly that so no one can overlook that. And if you don't do that, put it at least in the manual, especially when you're referencing your suggestion to the manual. Then they repeated I should send it back to the dealer and I'm glad I bought from Amazon so there was no problem returning the unit and I hopefully will get back my money very soon. This also means I do not have taken a second sample of that unit because it was returned already. In summary, MSR was a totally disappointing experience. The product was the most expensive one. It spilled dirt water all over the place, including the clean water, and the filtration results showed clear signs of contamination. And when asking for help, they acted like gods. How dare you questioning us? We work with the military, we have the laboratory. Learn how to troubleshoot your equipment. Is this really the way how you should treat your customers, especially when your product does not work as intended? By the way, I repeated this test with my 15-year-old MS Miniworks X here. Um, this seems to be from a time when MSR still cared about quality control. Believe it or not, my old filter did not blow out dirt water out of the piston. Yet, after 700 milliliters of water filtered, it would clog up. There would only be drips of water coming out down here. But still, it did not blow out the dirt water, even though pressure was involved. I did probe the sample, but since this is a 15-year-old unit, which is no longer produced, and I do not know if and how uh, later units would, be, would create reproducible results, I will not include that results here. It would be an unfair advantage for MSR, especially because this thing only needed to filter 700 milliliters un until I took the sample. Then I would indeed have to open that thing up and scrub the ceramic, which I did not do for all the other units. Um, so this result will not be included. I don't want to give MSR an unfair advantage, especially considering that their first product, their new product, failed. Why would I do you the favor when the product that I received was clearly not up to their standards and the customer service was not helpful at all? Sorry, this is a waste of time. Therefore, this 15-year-old MSR Miniworks X is the first and last product I will have bought from MSR and I would personally not recommend this filter to anyone. Let's move on to the Sawyer Point One Mini. The Sawyer Point One Mini is the smallest and lightest filter in my test, with the highest claims of absolute volume, meaning the amount of water that can be filtered over a lifetime of this filter. When browsing through the internet, uh, the biggest issue people seem to have with the Sawyer is the low flow rate. To be honest, I could not confirm that. From all the filters tested, the Sawyer Mini was the only one that could be used in a gravity flowing setup. And spoiler alert, did not clog up as heavily as others. From overall usability and versatility that I gathered over my two days of testing, the Sawyer Mini was actually my favorite. However, this was only until the test results started to show. The Sawyer Point One Mini showed clear signs of contamination from the very first test when it was brand new. 
While the test stripe might look extremely frightening after the 48 hours of breeding, I could see that the red color started to develop from one side after 36 hours, go to full red after 48 hours. This is a different behavior compared to the raw water. So it did filter something out. But after seeing that, I would not bet my life on it. This was the reason why the soya failed in this test for me. Passing through bacteria from day one. This is not good. So it was no surprise that the same thing happened after filtering 2.2 liters of dirt water through it. It started to turn red on one edge after 36 hours and continued to go full red after 48 hours. Again, we cannot tell anything about the amount of contamination from these test stripes, but it is clear indication that the filter passes through some living bacteria to form colonies and reproduce themselves. I would assume that one could get sick if drinking that water, so the soya is off my list. And just for completeness, I never got a response on my mail to soya, so for me to this point, customer service of soya is non-existent. Now let's talk about the reason why I've started this journey. The Bergquist filter bottle Fjellkarar with Alstrom filter. This bottle is sold under different brand names, but always using the same Alstrom filter. The bottle costs between 30 and 40 euros, including one filter cartridge, and the replacement filter cartridge costs between 15 and 20 euros. So I did not expect too much from it. In reality, I was surprised that it actually did what it was supposed to do. As you could see in video number two, this filter even removed the yellowish color from the water. The sample taken did not show any sign of bacteria growth after the 48 hour breeding of the test stripes. So it did filter not only all the bacteria, but also the particles or chemicals that were causing this yellowish color. After that interesting result, I was really excited to see how it would perform in my seven day torture test, but I could see over time actually after day one, that more and more force was needed to pull the clean water through the filter. On day two of the torture test, the suction force needed to suck clean water through the filter was so ridiculously high that I called this test ended. There's no way you could create that amount of suction force with your mouth for what this bottle would be intended. Basically, this filter was clocked after 1.2 liter and I pushed it further to 2.2 liters with a syringe using brute force. This is when I saw a slight color change towards yellowish again. So now I was interested to see if we had a breakthrough of the filter membrane and sample number two was taken. To my very surprise, the filter water still did not show any sign of bacteria contamination. Test stripe stayed snow white after 48 hours of breeding. So far so good. This Alstrom filter media really seems to work and I need to give them credit for that. While the empty filter bottle, including filter, weighs only about 140 grams, uh, opposite to the Grail Ultra Press, which weighs about 354 grams, the application in this bottle is highly unpractical. You basically carry around 500 milliliters of dirt water and suck through the filter once you need clean water. There's not really a practical way to fill up your clean water bottles when you're on a trip and you want to move on. So all you have is this 500 milliliters of dirt water that could be turned into clean water when you suck on it. You saw what I needed to do with the syringe. I could imagine that type of Alstrom disruptor media in a gravity type of application. That would make sense to me. However, for me this filter bottle failed because after 1.2 liters it failed to the point of unusability. With this type of filter, you also have no possibility to back flush or clean to restore the original flow rate. Finally, let's talk about the Grail Ultra Press. As we saw in video number two, the Grail Ultra Press also removed the, the yellowish color from the water. This is an indicator that actually something happens in here. When looking at video number two, you could see initial press went very smoothly and fast. The test sample turned back snow white after 48 hours of breeding. Perfect result. No contamination could be found in the filtered water of a brand new Grail Ultra Press. But already in video number two, at the end, where I show you my torture test procedure, it showed that pressing got harder and harder. On day one of torture test, it took already 27 seconds to filter 500 milliliters of water, as seen in video number two. On day two of torture test, we were already at 50 seconds for 500 milliliter of water. Looking at the manual of the Grail, they say, as press time reaches 25 seconds, it's time to replace cartridge. But they also say, 
Regardless of flow rate, cartridges are effective. No waterborne pathogens pass. Now we have contradicting information. As it was unpractical to filter through a clock cartridge and the chances of cross contaminations were rising because of dirt water passing the o-ring. So I decided to call it a fail after filtering of 2.2 liters of water. Again, there's no way of cleaning or back flushing this type of filter. So there's no way to restore the flow rate. When clocked, you need to replace the filter cartridge. But what about their claim, regardless of flow rate, their cartridge is effective? After filtering 2.2 liters through it, I took the second sample with the test stripe and breeded it again for 48 hours. And surprise, the test stripe came back snow white, so the claim was confirmed. With the grail, I could not confirm presence of bacteria in the filtered water. Neither brand new nor clocked filter cartridge. The general application is practical. You can fill up your empty water bottles and continue your trip. So here's the summary, my final comments. The MSR had a quality problem that contaminated probably the first sample. The second attempt with my old one clocked up after 700 milliliters. The soya repeatedly did not filter out enough, so there was confirmation of contamination in the filtered water. The Alstrom membrane clocked up after 1.2 liters of filtered water to the point of unusability, but the water was probably safe to drink. The application of that filter material in the bottle is, however, not very practical. The Grail clocked as well after 1.2 liters of water. After using a little bit of more force and more time, it could expand it to 2.2 liters, but the filter was clocked according to the manual. However, the water was safe to drink. A famous author of outdoor bushcraft and survival books, um, also a studied biologist, summed it up in very spot-on words, so I'm going to repeat that with my own words. In classical bacteria water filters, your pore size is too big to achieve sterile filtration. And in filters with smaller pore size, your filtration capacity is extremely limited. I would sign that. What will be my choice of water filter after that test? Hmm. Well, probably the grail, but I will need to figure out how I prevent clogging up. I'll probably add methods of pre-filtration for my future water tests, but this will be something for another video. What about you? Did you expect the results that I got? Were you surprised? What is your favorite filter and why? Let me know in the comments what you think of it and I'll see you next time. 73, bye bye and Merry Christmas!